right. Okay. I hope everything's good and everybody can hear me and see me. Welcome, everybody. My name is Martino Pedotti, and um, today I'm going to talk about um, the Estable project, so a project that um, I am I'm bringing on. So first of all, I would like to thank you, John DNA and the whole Star Bloom team for bringing me on and to get this uh, to create this opportunity to make it possible to make it a reality. So today I'm going to talk about what I am doing on my for, for first of for my Instagram page for now is my project is just on Instagram if you guys want to if you guys don't follow me uh, the name is Estegua E S T E G U G U A uh, Estegua project and uh, for now Estegua project is just a page about uh, spiritual and philosophical topics but very very soon I'm going to present something very new something that um, I've been working on for the past few years, which is a uh, universal language, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. So before doing that, I'm going to talk a little bit about my story and who I am and why I am doing this such a project and what does it mean exactly to be working on the on a universal language. And then I'm going to just um, explain what it is in words. I, I wish I could show to you guys what exactly is a um, a universal language and what do I mean by that but uh, for technical and legal reason I'll have to wait a little bit of time before publishing it probably a few months so uh, I can I can talk about it and explain what I'm doing and explain what's going to happen with it and its potential for the future of uh, this entire community and the future of consciousness and uh, so yeah let's let's just bring it on so my name as I said is Martin you know, and I'm Italian, as you can, I, you might hear from the accent. I'm, uh, I'm from Italy. I learned to speak English in Canada, where I lived for the past uh, three years of my life in and out between Italy and Canada, and where I had some um, experiences that kind of challenged my way of thinking and the way I see the world around me, the way I experience reality, and kind of made me question the meaning of everything. So these experiences which of course i'm not going to go into detail with otherwise i don't have time to talk about all the stuff that i want to talk about but um, four years ago i had a series of experiences that really made me change the way i was looking at things and made me realize that there, were, there is a deeper meaning in in everything in everything that we experience and this i wanted to understand this meaning because until that moment i was born and raised in a society very um, separated from spirituality, from this concept. It's a very materialistic place. So when I found myself in this position in which I was um, experiencing a part of reality that I was not even aware that could exist, I, it, it kind of triggered me in a way because it made me question literally everything I knew about myself and about the world that I was living on. And so this, uh, these experiences not only awakened me to the spiritual nature of the universe, but kind of funneled me into a, a research that uh, is the research of understanding why exactly such experiences happened to me and how is it possible that these experiences actually happened in the first place. Because again, I, until that moment, I thought that reality was completely random, just that we live in a chaotic universe that nothing has meaning or nothing is connected there is no fundamental order but then i had these experiences that of course made me change the approach that i had because i had to in a way um accept the fact that actually there is some sort of order in the universe and there and evolution has its own direction and we as humanity and as consciousness we are going we're moving into a conscious state that will include more information and more things more dimensions of existence and so i wanted to really understand that from a scientific point of view almost from a physical point of view and that made me question reality on a deeper level and made me question what is the mind and how does it work what is it that we do exactly when we're thinking what does it mean to think and and from a natural point of view, from a scientific point of view, from a physical point of view, what is the thought process itself? Because until that moment, I didn't really question this part, or I was just assuming that I knew I would have, it would be obvious if I just thought about it. But then when you experience new information or 
dimensions of existence that for the first time that you're just experiencing that you never saw before all your conceptions about the mind kind of follow apart because one starts to question wait where does this information really comes from if it doesn't come from my experiences or from my memory because it's a very new kind of information where does it come from and so through also psychedelic experiences and starting to do meditation and listening to many other people we, we of course had similar experiences i started to realize that indeed there is a field of energy a field of information that is accessible by the mind and which provides a sort of information that is intelligently organized on its own there is this intelligence that is decentralized everywhere in this field of information that we access through our mind and i started to realize that in a way what we are doing as human beings is that our thought processes and our, our ideas and our mental perceptions are kind of downloads that come from this plane of existence, this mental plane. And no matter how small or how big the thought processes are, like it might be just something that we do during the day or a philosophical topic that we're thinking through, the, what, what I was trying to get to is where does all this information come from, the whole package all together? So I slowly started to realize that, yes, indeed, there is a field of information and that we can access through different in different ways. My way at the beginning was through the psychedelic experiences, and then I developed my own ways through also Qigong, which is the practice that I'm studying, which I saw was introduced earlier in the presentation. And uh, so I, I also became a Qigong teacher, which I am right now. But to stay on the, the, the language on the language and on the central topic, what happened is that I I started to make to to I I pretty much made a bet with myself that was well if there is indeed a field that is universal in the sense that we all share this the mind we, our mind shares this field of information and we can access higher information higher level of perceptions and kind of access this universal collective consciousness then i in my mind this meant from a scientific point of view from a physical point of view that just in the same way as this field of energy that we all share which is the physical plane um, in the same way as this field is governed and structured by what we call the physical laws and mathematics and um, chemistry and all these this science that fundamentally is one science it, pretty much an expression of mathematics in many different ways but if that's the case then if we have another field so let's say in the other side so within ourselves but fundamentally it's a collective field just in the same way then there must be some sort of logic some sort of structure that defines that field as well and so this at the beginning was of course uh, just an idea but then i realized that not only this might be possible but there might be I, I already had an idea of what could it be the kind of the the the, the, the physical laws of this, of such field which are not physical laws in the sense that the physical laws express determined patterns and patterns of physical activity so materialistic movements and actions while this field the mental field acts upon probabilities so like whatever laws or whatever rules this field has in order to exchange information there, there, there have to be rules that have to do with probability and so thinking it through a little bit i realized that we actually already have access to such field and we already know the laws of such field because we have language like we think, and when we think, what do we do? We create and we put together information according to what we call logic. And logic has its own rules, its, its own ways of moving, and its own ways of expression. And so I realized that fundamentally, if, if I was right in the sense, if, if this field exists, and in fact, there is some sort of, there is a collective consciousness that we're sharing, then there must be a collective structure, that is to say, a structure that uh, works for everybody, that will represent this linguistical information. So in a way, I started to realize that there is an, like that what we say when we speak, depend, not, doesn't matter which language you're speaking, but at the core of the language, so behind the sounds that we do with our mouths, there is a similar structure. So for example, if I say house, so I want to go home, 
for example, in English, or if I, if I say it in Italian, voglio andare a casa, or in French, or in Spanish, or in any language, fundamentally, we're saying the same thing. We're saying that I want to go home. So the I, my function of being, wants to move to go somewhere, which is home. And so I realized that fundamentally, if I were to find a structure or a way to, to express any sort of linguistic pattern with the same rules, then I would create a universal language, which in, not in the sense a, a language that you can speak, but a way of communication that transcends the linearity of language. So when we talk, uh, when we talk any language that we can speak with words, we pretty much put one word after another. And so our organization of the words determines the meaning that we express. But fundamentally, all languages are on an organization of what? Of a subject, a verb, and a complement. For example, if I say, I eat an apple, I is a subject, I am the one doing the action. I'm eating, so eating to eat becomes the verb. And what am I eating? I'm eating an apple. So apple is the complement. So I realized that uh, by putting this structure on paper, or on a digital field, but on a field that is more than one dimension, more than just one line, something that can move around, then I could transcend the linearity of language, which means transcending the order that each language has of how do you organize a subject, verb, and object. Because for example, in Italian, I say, before I say the subject, or in English, we say the subject, then the verb, and then the object. But then someone that speaks a completely different language, like Russian or Chinese or other languages, might have a completely different order. Maybe they will say the verb first, then the complement, and then the subject. Or other languages will say the complement first, then the subject, and then the verb. So this was a problem, because my in my mind, if I wanted to create a universal language, something that could be applied to any spoken language, it had to be something that was transcending this linearity, something that could go beyond it. And so it had to be geometrical. It had to be something that you could see, something that had a visual impact. Because being in, in, in a field, in a multidimensional field, something more than just one line, then the order will, can be transcended. You don't need it anymore. No matter how, uh, what, what's your linguistical order in the language that you speak, you will be able to, to organize that information in a multidimensional level in the same way as someone that, that would speak a different language with another order of thoughts or of language. So basically, I started to, to try, basically. With, with little, I always try to make little examples or little yeah, trials to just try to organize information in a way that was transcending the linearity of language. And, in, and the other factor that I needed was that was, could, be, could organize language and provide all the different ways something can be expressed. So I, one of the main things, one of the main points of that my language uh, needed in order to be valid was that whatever you say, however complicated something can be said, it has to be brought down geometrically with this order that, that, I, that I was creating. And through two or three years, I started to, I researched the structure, which I found pretty much right away it's a very simple, it's a very easy language to learn, actually, if you, if you call it, consider it an actual language, it, um, it all develops around the, the shape of a circle and a square. So it's not really that complicated. And I usually, the people that see it, my friends and the people that I'm working with, in a matter of two or three hours, they understand the language and they are able to use it if they need to. So it's a, it's a very easy process to learn because fundamentally what we're, what we're seeing there is something that it's already implanted into your mind because when you're speaking, you already have this order. Your brain already knows how to organize such information in such way. The only difference is that instead of hearing it, instead of organizing it through sounds, through a line, what I'm offering, it's a structure that enables you to organize such information geometrically on a piece of paper or on a digital field or on any, anything that has more than one dimension. So, of course, like I, I, as I said, I can't really show what I mean by this in the sense that I, I, would, I, uh, I would like to show it. Uh, I have it right here, but uh, it's not really wise for me at this point to do it for many reasons. 
Um, but what I can do is to um, talk about what's going to happen once this language is going to be public. So what can it be and what am I going to try to do with it? And actually, honestly, what every like every, all of you guys that are listening, once I'll be public, once it will be public, you guys can, can do whatever you want with it. If you, if you find a way to apply it or to use it, that could be useful for yourself or for being in service to others or for anything at all. You guys are welcome to. There is, I have no, no problem with that. But what I'm gonna try to do with it is that many things because it has infinite potential. First of all, one can start speaking with another person or communicating with another person that speaks like different languages. Language, for example, the other day I tried to interact with um, with a person that just arrived in Italy and uh, couldn't speak a word of Italian or English, and in my mind. I said, well, if this person knew my language, I could easily communicate with this person. I don't even need a, um, a language like English or like any or sign language in order to understand what it means. It could literally communicate to me the most complicated thought and I would be able to understand, I would be able to grasp it. So that's the first application, talking with people, uh, transcending the language barrier. The second thing, which is, is very, it's very similar to this principle, is talking in the actual language. So, for example, if you go into a another place and you need to communicate with, with with some person and nobody knows us to speak English or the language that you're speaking, with something like Google Translator, you can translate the main words that you need to use for your sentence. Then put them, apply them to the structure, to the structure, to this universal language that I am creating. And through that, the other person, of course, by the, the only requirement needed here is that he actually is familiar with this language, with this structure. But through that, only by uh, on seeing where the words are, the words that you, you, you can translate, then you will understand the whole meaning of the sentence. Because the sentence depends on the structure that you see, not on what you say. So the structure, how the information is structured, how it is laid out, carries the meaning of what you're saying itself. And these are the two main, like the two very basic applications. That is to say, a universal language, that's what you would use it for, communicating, transcending the barriers of current languages. But then where, we, where it gets interesting is that this language can be used to organize any sort of information. And this means that, uh, we, that this language will enable people enable a stigma project and many other people to create structures, digital structures, digital fields in which information will be organized um, in a way that it will be able, one will be able to see it. One will be able to understand visually what something means. And visual understanding goes 10,000 10, times faster than, um, than sound understanding in the human brain. We can remember things 10,000 time, 10, times easier if we see them than if we actually hear them. So there's gonna, this language, what's gonna happen is that if people, um, of course, approve it and uh, start using it, is that it will enable to think faster, to think more clearly, because for example, me that I, of course, I know this language. Many times when I find information that is really complicated or really intertwined, difficult to grasp the meaning of it, you can place this information in the right place in the mind according to your structure, to your mental structure. And doing so, what's going to happen is that you will be able to see the information. So you're going to have a detachment. So for example, here that we're talking about consciousness and meditations and all these things, one of the main points of meditation is learning how to be detached from the, the, the object that you're observing. Either it's a thought, either it's an emotion, either it's an actual external event. Detaching for non-reacting and that detachment will give you a, a objectivity, a clarity on what you're actually observing. Because once you attach yourself to something, once you're engaging into it, basically you, you engage your energy and you're not really able to see things very clearly. You kind of are uh, filled, like your, your, your perception is filtered by the object that you're attaching yourself to. That could be a thought process, could be an idea, could be an emotion, could be an external event, could be whatever. So basically with this language, what's gonna happen is that if people learn it, they're gonna, learn a way to detach themselves from the thought processes because they're able they will be able to see it of course to visualize it let's say see it it's um 
might be a little bit misleading. You, if, if you, you use this language in your own mind, what's going to happen is that you will be able to visualize your thought processes and therefore understand them from a objective point of view and learn how to navigate your own mind with a structure that will enable information to constantly repeat itself according to that structure. So in a way, what, what, what this language will enable people to do is that instead of just going around your head and going around your thought processes and kind of getting lost into the ideas or the information that you're processing and analyzing, this language will help you find a structure in the information that you are analyzing. And so in a way, since our thought process is linear, because we, in order to think, we have the little voice and the little voice acts upon language, which is linear. If we introduce a non-linear language in our mind, what's going to happen is that we're going to introduce a dimension. We're going to expand dimensionally, and the mind will be able to process information not anymore linearly, but on a field, a multidimensional field. And this, in a way, is a way to um, experience our own mind from a multidimensional point of view, without having to take psychedelics or without having to uh, do other things. Also, because uh, once you start learning this language, your your brain will like it because you under like it would it would be very easy to understand things that maybe weren't that easy until then. And by looking at information, just and by just by looking, it being able to understand it it's something that will enable the brain to go much faster to analyze information in a faster way, but not faster in the sense um, like with more energy that you will do, you'll do more effort in order to understand, but in a way that will enable you to just understand the concept by just looking at it. So being more aware, that's the right word. Maybe saying faster is, it's a, again, it's a little misleading. This language will bring more awareness on our thought processes and the way we interact with information in general. And one of the, and one of the, the other aspects of this project that uh, will become, hopefully, will become the main part of a Stigua project is that through this language, we can create platforms, online platforms, conscious networks, social new social new kinds of social networks that instead of having you know you have a phone and you have to scroll down on instagram and this is the only movement that you do when you're on a, on, a, on a phone either you're on google and you have to scroll down through websites or on instagram or on facebook or any social media you're always scrolling 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 what's going to happen is that if if someone um hopefully hopefully a stable project but um when when someone will create a platform that will organize all the information contained into the platform through this language or this structure, what's going to happen is that um, the experience of the internet is going to change. People won't, won't have only one direction in which to go. There's going to be all sorts of directions. And the directions that one will take will depend on what question is he asking, what kind of information is he seeking. And um, again, this, the, this seems all very complicated, but the language is actually really simple. And I think that in, in, in a matter of months now, hopefully before the end of the winter, um, there's gonna be the first publications and we will publish the first things that will make you guys understand, uh, actually understand and actually see and analyze and study this structure. But what's gonna happen is that this structure is gonna enable people to see and perceive language and perceive information and therefore being a little like create a detachment from it that will provide awareness and objectivity on the topic on the subject on the information that we are that that you are analyzing and so this is this is the main the main point of a stable project so then there is many other things that we're doing for example i'm here in europe and uh, i'm going to bring this this entire project close to prague probably very soon in which there is a mm -hmm. a castle and many people um, like-minded that are working on raising the collective consciousness so um, this um, this 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 castle is called Enkoveni castle and it's in it's in prague or close to prague and yeah we're going to try to gather more many people there many like-minded people and kind of 
uh, make this project a reality with many other projects that other people will bring there. But uh, uh, fundamentally, this is the stepping stone of a stigma project, because once we're going to publish this, this is what we're going to try to do, raise awareness through a change in the way we perceive information and the realization that there is indeed a field of energy, a field of consciousness that we share. And it's not only that we share it, but we share its functions, the way it functions, function in the same way for everybody. And this language kind of proves this, or at least hints towards this direction, because as this language will show, indeed, there is a common structure behind the workings of the minds of all people. And this structure is language itself. And to conclude this before, and then if you guys have some questions, I'll be, um, I'll answer the questions. But to conclude this, basically what this language is, in my opinion, and this is a theory, this is my uh, opinion on what I am doing, is that basically these are the, the these, Lang this language, it's basically the physical laws of the mental field that we all share and of which we can access to and we can access different dimensions of it and have different experiences, multidimensional experiences, mystical experiences. So there is this place, this field somewhere in the universe within ourselves that we can all access and have similar experiences. And in my opinion, this field is governed by language. In the same way as the materialistic field, the physical world that we all share is governed by physics. And these two don't, are not actually separated. They're actually a continuum of the same law, the logos, the fundamental workings of the universe. But of course, as being human beings, be kind of in the middle of the two, we, we perceive one in one way and one in the other way. So for example, imagine you're standing on the middle of the road and by standing in the middle of the road, by being there, there's gonna be a left and a right side. So by being human here, in a way that we can perceive physically this field and mentally another field, we perceive physics in one side and language in the other side. And so we kind of mapped up physics in the last century as human beings, we kind of understood how it's working and many people in the past have learned and understood how the mental field is working but then we forget we forgot about it and so hopefully this language will be a hint or a way a help that people will have access to in order to figure out a little bit how their mind works and figure out who they are and where they are or when they are in um, in their mind another way of seeing this is to say that one 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 side is space and the other side is time. And time is actually a multidimensional field, not just a linear field that as we've been taught, but it's actually a multidimensional field and language, it's the, the, the uh, language is pretty much the law that this field uses in order to express itself in our mind. And so, uh, uh, of course, uh, in order to, to say that all of this is, um, is correct and these are all the, poten the potential of this language is this, I'll have to wait till it's public and then you guys will let me know if I was right, <laughs> if actually this is um, what I think it is. But many people that I'm showing it to are agreeing on the fact that this has the potential to become a pretty big project and to create um, situations in which people will have access to a new field of information and a higher level of awareness by learning a structure, a geometrical structure that is pretty much language itself uh, unfiltered. So language without the filters of the sounds that, that we use to transfer the information from one mind to another. This is gonna be, a, this is a language that doesn't need the sounds but actually uses geometry in order to transfer this meaning from one place to another. Okay, so uh, I'm looking up if there is any any um, questions, but I from the group chat here, I don't see any questions. So I'll keep going. I guess my time is done, actually. So actually, thank you very much, Star Bloom, for bringing me on. Um, hope it wasn't too messy. I tried to bring a lot of information in, but um, Let's say that um, to bring a new language and just present a new language, it's kind of a hard topic. So sorry, you guys, if I was a little bit messy and I went a little fast, but um, that's it. So I have no time. They tell me I have no time for questions. 
I'll answer the questions maybe on a live on Instagram. So thank you very much for hearing me. Thank you very much, Starbloom, for bringing me on. Happy, happy solstice to everybody. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. And if you like the project and you want to know more, follow me on Instagram and uh, follow the project. And we, we will let you know uh, when the language is going to come out. It's going to be pretty soon. So thank you so much.